fifteen, six fourteen p.m. And this is going to be, I think, my third and final iteration of doing uh, improvements on this code for this particular program that I'm working on. Again, it's we've got a over here on the left. I've got a field set here and a legend with the icon and why are people mean and then each one of these um, ovals is a list item and inside the list item there's a link now the second video that I did you had to actually um, put your mouse pointer on the text in order to link to whatever page was going to uh, open up inside this iframe. What I wound up doing is inverting the nesting of the AREF um, link tag and the LI list item tag. So instead of the list item being on the outside and the AREF link on the inside, I put the AREF link on the outside and the list item on the inside. So that way even when you hover over the list item, not only did I put the title in there so that you could uh, see the tooltip that basically just reiterates what the subject matter is or the title of the um, column, but also you can click on this part instead of having to go over the uh, text itself to link to do the linking. Okay. So you see that is linked. I didn't have to touch the text at all. And that links and so on and so forth. Some of these things take a lot longer to load. If you look up here at the browser, you'll see that this is spinning. As long as this is spinning and you don't see the mean face, then you know the page is still loading. And if you look down here, you'll see all this stuff down at the bottom. It either is on the bottom right or the bottom left. Um, all the different coding that's in that web page. Uh, so in, in when you have a non-click event, it turns the list item from pink to white. Um, anyway, what else I did was instead of these links uh, having these list items having on-click events to directly link to MP3 audio files and directly to the web page, uh, I wound up letting all of these functions and an iframe in a separate web page link to this. So it really simplified the code. And when I open up the this particular landing page, you'll see that it simplified my navigation. I also used the body on load. The second video, this is the third one, the second video, the user had to physically click the scroll page to get this to go. At this point, as soon as the page finishes loading, as soon as the website that it's uh, connecting to finishes loading, it automatically starts scrolling. And it's scrolling kind of fast. The stop scroll stops at any time you want, and you could hit scroll again if you want to utilize it that way. I could have put my reading my audio snippets of the page. I could have had that autoplay as well, but that's something I want to always let the user do. Um, okay, so let's let's get to this final iteration of code. I want to move this down a little bit and go in my folder. Okay, so in box, I now have, let me right click and, and hit group by type. Okay, so I now have 1.html, 2.html, 3.html, 4.html, 5.html, and that's what all of these links actually link to instead of what they were doing before. So all of these are basically copy and paste with the only differences being what website they're pointing to and the name of the mp3 file. Um, so I can just click, I can right click just one HTML and just show you the code for that and that ought to be good enough. And also go out of box and open up the main landing page and show you whatever changes went there. Okay, so let me close down out of this and let's do a side by side again. Okay, so let's go to the one.html. Uh, again, 
you can notice what's in green, but uh, none, of, none of the things that are in green are being utilized by the browser. It's just a note to me, something I could use in the future if I want to uncomment it or whatever. HTML head script. And the page scroll didn't change at all, but I'll go over it again. That's what these buttons here call. Scroll page will call page scroll function and stop scroll will call the stop scroll function. But anyway, page scroll again is just window dot scroll by zero comma one in parentheses and then end end it with a semicolon. And then the next line of code is right here. Scroll delay equals set timeout and then in parentheses you are calling the page scroll function comma one hundred. Okay, let's look at the stop scroll function. Function stop scroll. The only thing in there is one single statement. Clear timeout and then parentheses scroll delay. There's the end of the script and here's the style. I don't really think I changed much with the style. Let me see, do I remember? Nothing changed in this. And uh, nothing changed in the sound bar. Nothing changed in the audio. Uh, nothing changed in the iframe. Yeah, nothing changed in the style at all. No CSS styles changed. Pretty sure. And the end of the head. This changed though. Initially this was just a body tag. What it looked like was just this. Body. But now I have body on load equals page scroll. So as soon as that body's done loading whatever that website wants it to load, it's going to call the page scroll function and automatically start scrolling. So that that was a change. Now notice the body on load equals page scroll is not on the landing page. It's not on the landing page itself. It's on this separate page that when you click on here actually gets pulled into this iframe. Okay. So remember, I'm just showing you one at HTML right now, not the landing page. All right, so then we have the sound bar. And let's see if anything changed. Nothing changed there. There's the button that calls the page scroll. Of course, we've got the body on load calling it as well. But if you hit stop scroll and you want to resume scrolling, then this button will resume scrolling because it's calling page scroll again. And then there's the red button that calls the stop scroll function. Audio controls that uh, basically just gives you the 1.mp3 audio uh, file of me reading the page, which is right there. And there's the end of soundbar. And here's the iframe down here at the bottom part. iframe source equals. And then here we've got the address of whichever website I'm pulling in. Scrolling equals yes, frame border equals zero, end of iframe, end of body, end of HTML. And I basically just made four other HTML pages. I had two dot HTML all the way to five dot HTML. And they were all the same except for I changed the MP3 source and I changed the uh, address of the website. All right, so that basically goes over that. Let's go over the landing page. Why are people mean that HTML? There's the HTML beginning tag and the head tag. Nothing changed with the shortcut icon. Nothing changed with the title. Nothing changed with the style, I don't think. Let me double check. Um, no, no, no. Uh, did I do anything? Nope. Mm -mm. Let's see. I might have changed this. I think originally I only had uh, the li hover um, was a background color of white. I think I think the col I added color black to make it when you hover instead of just being whatever the link color is to make it like even more of a contrast uh, but that's not anything major um, I am no longer using two iframes so I don't really need to incorporate this in a style let's see I'm not sure if I remember if this is if I'm doing CSS that's the right way to comment I guess it is so I'm not using this I don't really need to have it 
it doesn't matter if I still if I didn't comment out it's not going to hurt anything but if I don't need it I don't need it um, so we're only using the one iframe and the the style looks like the same for that I was going to put a highlight in here with an opacity and what that would do I wound up not doing it but what it would do is it would put like um, a transparent highlight area highlighted area over top of the um, web page and as it's scrolling maybe your eyes could just focus on you know the light yellow portion but then I elected not to go with that I I messed with that in the past and it was kind of a cool idea initially but then it kind of just made the um, page look more clunky with too many busy colors and stuff so I elected to not use that so there's the end of the style the end of the head and here's the body tag all right here's the field set again which has this gray background and the legend which has the face and the um, the uh, little title in here and the image source equals box forward slash mean dot jpeg that didn't change height 50 pixels that didn't change and the text did not change in the legend the ordered list did not change now the list items did because before I had the opening list item tag which goes from here to here on the outside of the nest it was the outer nest but what I did is all I did was take this tag copy and paste it um, on the inside so I have the a link on the outside of everything it's the outer link so that makes this entire thing a clickable link instead of just the text just the underlying text and I preferred the uh, functionality of that so a ref equals box forward slash one dot HTML target equals B because remember my second iframe uh, which right now is my only iframe I did give a name uh, or an ID of B so li on click this changed too because instead of instead of the on click opening two things one in the target a and one in the target b iframes i just have on click equals style dot background color equals white return true i probably don't even need the return true i think that was only if i had multiple commands on the on click but i'm not sure the title is also on the list item what makes a person mean and cruel so that when you hover over this you get the tooltip so that was the same but basically for every one of these list items the list item tag goes on the inside and the a link goes on the outside and that's the same over and over again I think this was different the Grinch Grinchy Grinch link a ref equals box forward slash Grinch dot HTML so when I click on that this is a little bit different I wound up taking the Grinch.html page and instead of just having the image at a hundred percent height I gave it a, a height of hundred percent and a width of a hundred percent so that the image would stretch completely from edge to edge and top to bottom left to right and top to bottom in the um, iframe um, li on click style dot background color is white return to title Grinchy Grinch when you cover over the image it says click to watch the Mr. Grinch on YouTube in a new browser tab so this is different too so I have to open up the Grinch.html and show you how I turned this image into an image link and it's very easy all you do is what you did here with the list item you put the a ref tag which is the link tag on the outside of the image link so let's show you that really quick um, box Grinch HTML edit with notepad see here we got HTML head style end of head body and see here's the a link tag see there's the this whole thing if I can and then there's this whole thing so I'm trying to separate it so I can show you the chunks this whole piece right here from the less than sign to the greater than sign 
all of this is the opening link tag. AREF equals HTTPS blah 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 YouTube. This is a uh, uh, a YouTube video with the Mr. Grinch song and target equals underscore blank allows you to open that in a new tab title that's the tooltip that says click to watch the Mr. Grinch on YouTube in a new browser tab and I just showed you that before I open this page and here's the image image source equals Grinch dot JPEG height equals a hundred percent and this is interesting because I thought that the width was also 100%, but it's been zed out. It doesn't make sense because it was taking up the whole thing before. Let me see. Let me run just Grinch.html. There must have been a reason that I zed that out, but it still looked like it stretched the whole window. Okay. You see how it just stretches it? And it actually kind of doesn't look really all that good because um, it ruins the natural aspect ratio of the image and kind of distorts it. So if I zed the width out and refreshed it, now it's going to keep the a aspect ratio. What it's going to do, it's always going to keep the height being 100% and only when you make it smaller can you see how that image is shrinking but maintaining aspect ratio that it that is actually probably a better way to represent your images because they don't get skewed I just didn't like having this extra these extra bars on each side but you know it's not that big of a deal uh, so let's see then there's the ending a tag the ending link so you have the opening link and the closing link and inside the link tag you have the image so what happens is when you click on this link you open get a new tab to open and that's going to open up that YouTube video and there it is okay so instead of so instead of this uh, navigation link opening the YouTube video you click it you get this image of this and you click on the image to open up the YouTube video um, end of a end of body end of HTML okay so I believe that's the only changes that I made so it kinda cleaned the code up a little bit I also took those check boxes those random check boxes off of here because you know, if I don't have any JavaScript to do any function with it, but what's the point? It just made it look too cluttery. All right, so that concludes this third iteration of this, and I will not be playing with this one anymore. Everybody, uh, mothers out there, have a nice, happy Mother's Day.